Welcome back to your favorite weekly horoscope, or is this the worst weekly horoscope? Do you hate this horoscope? Let me know in the comments below. Anyway, welcome back. This time for July 4th through July 10th of 2022. My name is Cam White. As my YouTube channel says, we have a big week ahead of us. Um, not like big as in maybe like extravagant, but big as in a highly anticipated transit is occurring this week. Um, a transit in which that will shift the vibe uh, a lot. Let me go ahead and pull up the highlights. Is this the button? No, wait, this is the button. There we go. Uh, going over the highlights this week, we have first Mercury entering Cancer, which um, I kind of like. I kind of, I have a lot of mixed feelings about Mercury entering Cancer. Um, there's good things to it, but there's bad things to it too, like everything else. But really the main thing to think about is Mars entering Taurus. Do you guys know what happened the last time Mars entered Taurus? I'll let you think about that and I'll let you know here in a few minutes, but let me know what you guys think about Mars entering Taurus. Mars entering Taurus this week, not good. For some people, it's not going to be good. For other people, you'll actually probably like it a little bit. Uh, Mercury is going to sextile Mars, which will alleviate that hardcore transit. Mercury squares Jupiter. Not the best transit ever, but it could be good. And then the sun sextiles Uranus at the end of the week for a liberating vibe. Um, Rather than just talking about the highlights, let's just kind of go into this week and it'll make a little bit more sense. Uh, we're starting this week off. Really, as we go into Monday, it's just the moon in Virgo making a square to Venus. Again, not necessarily a lot. I think the biggest thing I really want to talk about at this moment is we're still just getting off of this new moon in Cancer. You know, the moon is now waxing. The moon is now increasing in light. We're getting to that first quarter phase here in a minute. A lot of this kind of vibe is about uh, increasing the energy, getting things done, being productive. Like when the moon is waxing, you want to like work up towards something. You don't want to like decrease your energy. That's like what you're supposed to do after a full moon. But the moon is going to be squaring Venus here. So the biggest thing with the uh, moon, actually, hold on. Wait, did I do this right? I need to double check something. Okay, I am doing this right. Sorry, I wanted to make sure this was recording in 4K. Anyway, um, the moon's going to be in Virgo squaring Venus. Now, the problem with this is Typically, I like the moon and Venus making a connection to each other, whether it's a square, an opposition, a trine, a sextile, whatever it is. But these are both immutable signs. So while Venus is in Gemini and it's looking for the stimulation, the socializing, the fun, Venus is like, again, uh, pleasure, enjoyment, stimulus. Venus in Gemini is very stimulating. Like I I'm a Venus in Gemini. And I'm just like, I, I, I made a tweet about this. Sometimes I miss Twitter it's just to put out some thoughts, but um, I, I used to make like tweets about like what it's like to have Gemini placements, specifically Venus and Gemini is like, I could be listening to music while watching two YouTube videos while reading something. That's like the Gemini vibe is like, I need all of the data. I need all of the information. I need all of the media all at once. The problem is with the moon and Virgo squaring Venus, this is kind of like, it's hard to get anything done when you've got all of this stimulation going on. And I think with the moon in Virgo, again, the moon's about like our emotions, our body being connected to how we feel. It's in Virgo and you guys know what I'm going to say. It's a lot about like analysis paralysis. It's a good time to clean things. I think the moon in Virgo is just a good time to get things organized, get things together, touch them, be physical, be tangible. So you can get a, you know, like when, when, for example, I'm much more of a uh, on hands learning kind of person. Like you can tell me how to do something all day long, but until I physically do it, I won't know how to do it. That's something that I really associate to like Virgo, to be honest with you. I'm sure we could associate it to other things, but I think about the moon in Virgo where there's this sense of like needing to touch, needing to grasp, needing to physically count everything out so you know what you have, what you don't have. But the problem is it's squaring Venus and Gemini. Venus and Gemini wants to listen to music and watch a YouTube video and read this, you know, paper and 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 do this but the moon in virgo is like hey bitch like i can't concentrate we need to focus it in here a little bit and so i think on monday there might be this feeling of like overwhelmed like oh, i got to get this done i got to get that done and but this is distracting i got to hang out with these people but i got to make sure i get that done on monday cool your jets honestly i think that's the real vibe about monday uh oh oh anyway sorry i'm distracted by a cat um the moon in Virgo is going to be squaring Venus and Gemini. It's one of those things where, uh, like, the moon in Virgo is going to want to focus, but Venus and Gemini is, wanna, gonna be, is going to want to be playful. I think another way to look at this is, like, if you've ever been to, like, 
uh, Knott's Berry Farm or Six Flags and you're with your friends and everyone wants to go here and they want to go there, but you got to pick one place. I think on Monday, it's a good time to really like focus in your energy. Um, you're going to have to anyway, because that's where the moon's at. But be loose about what you want to accomplish. Like the moon and Virgo squaring uh, Venus and Gemini. You're going to be able to get some things done, but don't be afraid to kind of prioritize like having fun. You know, Mercury's still in Gemini here uh, with Venus. So I think there's a lot of like learning. There's a lot of stimulation. And the moon in Virgo isn't necessarily always going to get its comfort zone. Like I think the other thing with Gemini is like, you know, if you're with your friends and let's say you're going to like Six Flags and everyone wants to ride all these different rides, but let's say you are throwing a little bitch fit and you're like, I, all everyone wants to go here and everyone wants to go here, but I just want to do this one thing. It, this is one of those things where you're going to have to like, for the greater good, kind of get over yourself in a, in a sense. Um, I also think the moon in Virgo scoring Venus and Gemini, nothing's ever as really as fun as we project it to be. Like you've ever done things with your friends, you're like, this is going to be great. I love my friends. And then you go out with your friends and like the night actually isn't all that fun or great. Like it's kind of not as exactly the way that you wanted it to be. That's a lot of what Monday looks like. So as we get to Tuesday, let me actually, I'm a little cramped up with space right now. I kind of fucked up the setup. This is not, my setup is different right now. Anyway, Tuesday, look at this. I know for all the Virgos, this is not lined up, but I had to just shove all of this into the screen. Okay, Mercury enters Cancer. Mars enters Taurus. Mercury sextiles Mars. The moon goes opposite Neptune. As it goes opposite Neptune, it will then ingress into Libra. Let me point, let me get my finger straight here. Libra. And then it squares Mercury. So there's quite a bit of action on Tuesday. It's not subtle at all. So if you really want the real gist of it, if you have not figured out what happened the last time Mars ingressed into Taurus, it was January 6th. Now, I think it's really interesting. The same people that are like, oh my God, January 6th was this insurrection and it was the worst day ever, are also now the same people who will be like, the government doesn't work for us and we need to overthrow the government. <laughs> Again, everyone, like if you just took off the labels of the political parties, most people would agree that the government doesn't serve or help us and they don't want to help us. And anyway, I just find the hypocrisy super funny. Anyway, we are, I think we talked about this in the Pluto Pilled podcast it's actually a mouthful to say with Dan and SJ Anderson. And we talked about there's probably going to be a revisit to a January 6th thing on July 5th. Um, also, I've made predictions. Something's happening to Biden. I don't know. I, I personally believe he might die, um, but something is going to happen to Joe Biden on January 5th. That's for sure. He's going to get involved into something. There's no way around that. Um, and I have a video about that on my Patreon if you want to check that out. And I've talked about it before. But anyway, Mars is entering Taurus. And before we even talk about Mercury, we have to talk about Mars. This is a huge deal. What was super interesting about the last time Mars entered Taurus was, that, again, that was January 6th, 2021. That was six months after. So Mars was in Aries all of 2020, and it retrograded in Aries, and it squared Saturn, and it squared Pluto. Um, one of my favorite astrology examples was, the I think it was the first presidential debate between Trump and Biden. If you watched it, it was all, it was almost fun because it was just too old. Like they didn't even debate anything. They just yelled at each other the whole time. It was really funny. Anyway, uh, we just went through all of that tension. And then during January 6th, and I was watching that on C-SPAN too, because I'm a nerd, but Mars entered Taurus. And, you know, we had that image of like the guy with the bullhorns, like the imagery in, in the astrology is sometimes so like you can't make stuff up sometimes like the guy with the bull horns charging and being like the front face of that and Mars enters Taurus and it's like the bull. Anyway, we're going to have something like that again. Uh, similarly, I think it's going to be something I, I want you to think of it this way, because I think on July 5th, there's a lot of political things that are going to be going on. And if you live in America, a lot of political things can change things day to day. Um, but Mars is about fights. Mars is about conflicts. Mars is about um, disruption. And it's going into its sign of detriment. It's going into its sign of Taurus. Um, what the word detriment means is outside of its like home. Mars feels more comfortable in Aries, right? Aries is about war. It's about confrontation. But Taurus is about peace. Taurus is about like beauty and value. And, you know, one thing I thought that was super significant about Mars and Taurus and in, in, in January 6th, I don't want to call it an insurrection. I, I study history. Uh, it wasn't an insurrection. Um, and people from like South America or other countries would probably be like, yeah, that was an insurrection. 
it got out of control. Um, it definitely wasn't supposed to be that way, but I thought it was very interesting because it was such a, like on both parts, um, the people who uh, stormed the White House, um, it wasn't like a planned thing by them. And I know I'm going to get so many comments with the camera. It was actually an insurrection. It was the worst day ever. Whatever. It, it really wasn't. But what's really interesting is that these people didn't really like plan to convene to do that, nor did the security. Because if you actually get into this, too, um, and again, people are going to people are going to disagree on things I say, and that's fine. But what I want to say is there's a lot of evidence that the security didn't really like try to hold them in. Like there's video of like the security letting people in. So there's something very like, it's not like if it was like a Mars and Aries insurrection, it would have been like, I mean, guns blaze, people would have fucking died. Like that's a Mars and Aries insurrection versus a Mars and Taurus is like, you know what? We're going to breach the gates. Nothing's going to happen. And it's going to be this half-assed lazy attempt of a, you know, I don't even want to call it a coup because it's just so, it's just that shit got so blown out of proportion. But there's some, uh, why I'm bringing this up is Mars and Taurus is, it was a lazy event. It wasn't that crazy. Um, I think it was crazy to watch, but it wasn't like this full force military thing. It was a truly half-assed event of people, like it was pretty much a protest, a riot that got out of control, right? That's a lot of like Mars and Taurus. There's a sense of fighting and conflict and not necessarily doing everything that you have to do in order to uh, accomplish the means um, or accomplish the task, I should say. Mars and Taurus, the best analogy I like to think of is it's like a dull blade. And if you know anything about like knives, a dull blade is often more dangerous than a sharp blade because that dull blade, if you're cutting, won't be able to cut that much and you'll have to put more effort and that could either break the blade, it could slip and hit you or hit someone else versus a sharp blade is the safest blade. And so there's something about Mars and fights and conflicts turning, you know, I always think of like maybe even Mars and Taurus as like rust, like a rusty knife or a rusty shovel. It's not necessarily like the sharp blade. It's very you know, um, maybe even like, I think of like a rut with Mars and Taurus. But anyway, let's go back to the simple stuff here. Mars is about fights and conflicts and it's in Taurus. Uh, it's a fixed sign. So whatever we kind of initiated with Mars and Aries, we start to be a little bit more flatlined about. Um, I had said this before in my month ahead horoscope on um, my Patreon as well as the rising sign horoscope. So I do a month ahead horoscope and rising sign horoscopes on my Patreon. Um, and in those videos, I talk about Mars and Aries is like a car at a uh, at a dead stop and slamming on the gas. the The engine opens up, the gas gets flooded into the into the engine, and you're ripping and you're going. That requires a lot of fuel and a lot of energy, but you can keep going fast. Versus Mars and Taurus is much more about momentum. Um, I like to think of Mars and Taurus as like when you're going about eighty miles an hour on the freeway. In order to keep that momentum, you really only need a little bit of gas. You really don't need that much energy to keep that going, at least if you're like on a flat surface. So when Mars goes into Taurus, I want you to think about sustainability. Um, I know that's like super, but a sustainable energy output. Like again, Mars is, what I love about astrology is that it's like a time honoring exercise. And these past few months or these past few weeks with Mars and Aries, it was like, put your pedal to the metal. You need to go. It's, it's on versus Mars is in Taurus you know, gas ain't cheap. You can't just go to, if your <laughs> gas is not cheap right now, what is the most sustainable way to use your energy? Mars and Taurus is like, hey, you know, you can keep this momentum going, but you don't need to throttle. You don't need to step on the gas. You just need to like keep that pace that is going to work for you. Now, later on down the road, Mars is going to be hitting, uh, where are we at? Uranus in the North Node. Mars is going to be squaring Saturn. So we will be challenged with keeping that momentum, but Mars and Taurus is like, hey, you need to just keep a momentum that you can keep up with. You know, if you can't do, like, for example, I I also bring this up because Jupiter's in Aries right now, so Jupiter's about, like, knowledge and gratitude, and, you know, I've been thinking a lot about, as astrologers, we get really worked up on Jupiter of, like, oh, Jupiter's this great planet, and it's so amazing, but Jupiter is, like, about, like, wisdom and knowledge and I think I've already said this before, but uh, a lot of Jupiter, like you have to go through trials and tribulations to really learn something. You have to have, like, in order to truly be grateful, it's it's hard to be grateful for something if you uh, that you have if you've never gone without it, if you didn't know what it was like without it, right? It's like, what's that saying? You don't know what you have until you lose it. And anyway, I bring this up because Jupiter's in Aries right now. So a lot of our, like, higher energy, a lot of our, like, 
a lot of our energy is focused on this airy stuff about like just accomplishing and doing. And I think it's going to be easy to get caught up in your inability to do like Mars and Taurus is your like, I don't like saying the word that can't, but you will be caught up in your inability to accomplish a task or do something that you want to. And that can be um, challenging. So I think while Mars is in Taurus, don't be hard on yourself. But just like, what is something that you can do every single day? What is something that you can keep, uh, that you can have stability with? All of this energy, uh, again, imagine you're in a car and you only have enough gas to throw on the, th like to, you know, pretty much, what's the word I'm looking for? You only have enough gas to get going. Now it's time to, you know, if you drive a stick shift, throw it in neutral and to kind of coast. It's not about, you know, not doing anything. Like Mars and Taurus, it'll be easy to be lazy, but, you know, Mars is also a malefic planet. Mars is a bad planet and it's in Taurus. It'll be easy to be lazy, but I'm going to tell you it's not going to feel good. It will not feel good to not accomplish, but it, you're also going to be pressured to like do more than you can. So with Mars and Taurus, really, I'm, I'm kind of hounding on this because it's really important to be easy on yourself. Now, I think that is also a, t a tested or um, there's a, what's the word I'm looking for? That is also said with Mercury. Mercury is going into Cancer. Mercury is about, again, planning, logistics, ideas, rationality. In Cancer, we're focusing on nurturing, protecting what is of necessity. And I also want you guys to notice that Mercury is combust now. If you don't know what combustion is, that is when a planet is near the sun. Uh, and combustion means like, you know, on fire, burning up. And there's this idea of like when Mercury is combust, there's this like, like, you, Mercury's in Cancer, so you want to protect. You want to focus on what is important, but when it's so close to the sun, it can be like hard to capture those ideas. Now, next week, we will have Mercury Kazemi, and that's when all of the clarity hits, and that's when the, those ideas land and stick. But for right now, it's not going to be so simple as to like, oh, this is my plan, and I'm just going to do it. Mercury's combust. Like, you might feel this way, but like getting the, like, the plan together and the details together will be much more complicated. Now, when Mercury enters Cancer and we start to, again, mentally shift towards necessities, nurturing, uh, uh, protecting what's important, Mercury is going to sextile Mars. Now, one way I was thinking about this is like Mars and Taurus is like, things are going to come to a halt. Mars and Taurus slows down a lot more. Like think of, you know, I remember when the election happened, um, it was so like, I just remember the energy of this country during the election was just insane. And then I remember Joe Biden got elected and there was kind of, I lived in LA, so it was very liberal. So it was like, there was a, a calmness in the air, but then Mars entered Taurus and everyone's like, fuck, here we go. Same, same fucking shit, different day. And Mars and Taurus is going to be this grinding halt. There's going to be this like irking energy. However, with Mercury sex telling Mars, it's kind of like bad news is going to be given to you very nicely, if that makes sense. So I really think on, on Tuesday, and this is also a Mars ruled day, there's something about something coming to an end, something like it, whatever you were doing with Mars and Aries, there's something about that you're going to have to cut off that is going to have to come to a slowdown and it's going to be communicated really nicely. So it might be served up to you on a silver platter, but it's just not going to be a good message. It's going to be a lot about slowing down. It's going to be a lot about, you know, things not working the way that you want to. So, you know, on Tuesday, it's, it's going to be a rough day. It's going to be a rough day. Okay. Now let's talk about the moon. The moon, I can't believe, I've been talking about fucking Tuesday for like 20 minutes now. Anyway, the moon's going to be in Virgo opposite Neptune. And the moon in Virgo opposite Neptune is so like, have you ever like gone for a trip and you packed everything, you double checked it, but then you leave the house and you're like, I fucking forgot something and I have no idea what it is. That is the moon in Virgo opposite Neptune. The moon in Virgo is like, I feel like the moon in Virgo can never get like comfortable because it like needs to be like touching something or planning something or thinking about something like there's so much anxiety with Virgo placements, um, especially when you have like the moon there. Um, but when the moon's opposite Neptune, there's like something missing or something that you don't like, or again, like moon and Virgo opposite Neptune is like, you feel like, uh, I do this all the time with my YouTube videos. My YouTube videos are so inconsistent. Cause like sometimes I forget this or sometimes I forget that. And no matter how hard, well, another way to look at it is, um, when you produce music, if you're producing music, when you analyze and analyze and analyze and focus in on things, you can often miss things and not even see it versus if you like have a project and you focus in on it, but then take a break from it and you put it off for a second and then you come back to it, you can be like, oh, I missed this. Oh, I missed that. 
So I think on the moon and Virgo opposite Neptune, there's this sense of like, hey, look, you can you can go into these details, but if you if you feel like something's missing and you can't identify it, set it down, take a break, move on to something else. You know, I think with, again, Mars and Taurus is like, hey, take a break. We've been going really hard with Mars and Aries for a while. Take a fucking rest. Mercury's in Cancer. Like, it's okay. And I think this moon in Virgo opposite Neptune is like, but I need this, but it's got to be that way. And what am I doing? You're just going to have to fucking relax. And that will happen later on on Tuesday when the moon ingresses into Libra. Because later on on Tuesday afternoon, the moon will enter Libra. The moon's in Libra. It's so much about like just relaxing. You know, like the like the moon in Virgo is so like uptight and the moon in Libra is about like, for example, I think of like Virgo of back in ancient Sumerian days where language was, you know, language comes from uh, math, essentially, which is like when they were like, you know, harvesting wheat and they had to make trades, they had to communicate that in some way on clay tablets. And I always think of Virgo like that. But then back then bread, there was like, like I don't want to say bread was shared because I feel like that's too an, an idealistic way of looking at history. But there was this sense of like people would harvest the wheat and then they would dispense that out to the people. And that's the Libra part of this of like, how much do we have to give versus what do, uh, how much do we have to give versus who do we have to give it to? And there's a lot of this weighing things out when the moon goes into Libra. And so when the moon enters Libra, hey, what is a negotiable way of doing things? As the moon goes into Libra on Tuesday, I can't believe I'm still talking about Tuesday, the moon Oh, it will actually square Mercury first. Let's actually talk about that. Because I was going to say the moon goes opposite Jupiter. So there is this like, hey, you know, there's a lot of people. There's what Jesus fed, like how many people with like two fish and two bread that Jesus feeding a gang of people with is very moon and Libra opposite Jupiter. Aries is like, hey, I got these two fish. We're going to we're going to figure this out. <laughs> but as the moon goes into Libra, it's going to square Mercury. Actually, that's still a good analogy because the moon and Libra is like, all right, we have to dispense this to people but it's squaring Mercury and Mercury's in Cancer. It's like, oh, wait, uh, what is most important to dispense to people? What is the most important to give to people? And this moon and Libra squaring Mercury and Cancer is like, there may not be enough. Moon and Libra squaring Mercury and Cancer is like, you know, also too, that, I feel like that's such an uncomfortable situation because the moon and Libra just wants everyone to be happy. just wants everything to be balanced. But with Mercury and Cancer, it's like, you know, some like there's um this is actually a big conversation. So there's like equality and then there's like equity. Now, those terms are used. Uh, in my opinion, those terms are weaponized nowadays. But the idea of like in order for things to be equal, some other people have to be given uh, different circumstances or better opportunities or whatever the situation is. I feel like that is a mo Mercury and Cancer squaring Moon and Libra because Mercury is about like logistics and planning. And this moon and Libra is like, okay, in order for things to be fair, we're going to have to maybe prioritize one thing over another. But I think the hardest part is the moon will square Mercury and there's this sense of like, hey, you know, these like Mercury and Cancer's focus on necessity. Mercury and Cancer's focus on like, again, nurturing and protecting. And it's squaring the moon and Libra of like, it, in order to do that, you may not necessarily have everything equal and peaceful. You know, for example, like... um when you're budgeting, if you ever work on a budget, which a lot of you are probably working with budgets now because everything's really expensive. Um, you know, at some times in the month, you might have to prioritize something uh, to where your budget's not necessarily even. You might have to prior prioritize this or prioritize that. And like, you know, I was just talking, uh, you know, on in Gen Z people and millennials might relate to this, but like an online humor, like when you're like 18, it's like, when you're like a kid, 20 bucks is like a lot of money, but then you turn like 18 or whatever. And then it's like $20 turns into a hundred dollars. And then there's some point as an adult where like a thousand, everything is just like a thousand dollars for whatever reason. Um, and there's this sense of like, fuck, you might have to prioritize an expenditure or you might have to prioritize something that might throw you off balance, but it's just what has to happen. And as the moon then separates from the square to Mercury, where it's like, fuck, I have to actually focus on this. I actually have to prioritize this. Then the moon will go opposite Jupiter. And this is like, Hey, I have to prioritize this, but then this is what is left. How do we dispense that? And the moon opposite Jupiter is like, again, it's still easy to be jovial and giving and bless people, but there's got to be a fair and balanced way to do it. Like Jupiter, like for example, Jupiter and Aries is very like, just go big or go home. And the moon and Libra is like, hey, in order to go big, I need the rest in order to do that kind of stuff, right? And so I just think on Tuesday, you know, I hate to say this, but like Tuesday is a really good day to give up. <laughs> um, and I don't mean that as like give up everything, but like don't be afraid to like, 
let your like disarm yourself and just kind of like and because the moon in Libra opposite Jupiter and Aries is very like negotiating terms like okay if I'm gonna Jupiter and Aries what do I actually need to do to do that like the moon in Libra is a big negotiator it's opposite Jupiter and Aries so it's like hey hey Jupiter I want a Jupiter and Aries but I gotta take care of my priorities first okay and that moon's gonna square Mercury it's like hey it's gonna be hard to make everyone happy you can't make everyone happy it's like, even if you try to make everyone happy, trying to make everyone happy will make everyone mad, by the way. That's something as a Libra moon I have learned. And that moon's going to go opposite Jupiter where you're just going to have to negotiate something. And again, I would ask you while Jupiter's in Aries and Mars is in Taurus, what is sustainably, like, what is sustainable? You know, sure, you might be able to go hard for a few weeks, but then what is like afterwards, what is a reasonable way to keep consistency? Mars is in a fixed sign now. It's really about repetitiveness and just keeping that energy going, keeping that momentum going. So again, you don't need to, when you're on the freeway and you're already going 80, you don't need to slam on the gas to pick it up a little bit. You just need a little bit of gas to keep it going a little bit more. So just be aware of that. All right, 20 minutes in and or 30 minutes in, we're just getting to Wednesday. Anyway, um, I I feel like I'm something is up with my cropping. I'm like not in the frame I need to be in. Anyway, <laughs> Wednesday, the moon will go opposite Jupiter and the moon will train Venus. Again, I really like this. Because the biggest thing is, as we get to Wednesday, I already talked about this, the moon goes opposite Jupiter. It's time to negotiate. Uh, again, what's fair? What's right? What is sustainable? And you know, when it comes to negotiating and it comes to terms and conditions, there's things that are fair to both parties. And there's things that like, for example, don't just be like, don't just quit and give up because I said that. Like the moon in Libra opposite Jupiter Aries is like, you still need to be giving some energy. You still need to be giving some momentum. But like, what is a sustainable way to do it? Now, to go back to that, Jesus fed like a, I don't remember what the number was. Um, I'm sure i am sure they weren't counting heads back then, and I don't think the numbers over a couple thousand years are consistent. But anyway, Jesus fed a lot of people with two fish. That's word on the street. <laughs> so this moon in Libra opposite Jupiter and Aries is really like, hey, this is what I have to give. Will you accept that? Then after the moon goes opposite Jupiter, it trines Venus. Yeah. I'm pretty sure if you're... Uh, it was it was it Jewish people? What were the people in the desert? I don't think it was Jewish people, but I might be wrong. But anyway, they were probably stoked to have whatever they could. And the moon in Libra, opposite Jupiter, is like, this is what I have. Will you take it? The moon shining Venus in Gemini is like, yeah, I'll fucking take it. I'll take whatever you have. Give that shit to me. I'm hungry. I have been banished to the desert for 40 years. I would like to fish at some point, but... I think as the moon goes opposite Jupiter, there's this level of negotiating. And then the... I think on Wednesday, what's nice about Wednesday is once you kind of figure out what needs to be prioritized and what needs to get negotiated, we get into Wednesday and that moon trines Venus and it's harmonious. Like Venus is in Gemini. For example, the moon in Libra trining Venus in Gemini is like socialized. Like I think a lot about like food is such a, such a magical thing for human beings. Like, you know, we all convene. Like one of my favorite things ever is like having a big meal with a big group of people and that Sometimes it's silent. Sometimes there's only a moment of silence, but that moment of silence where you're just eating with people and everyone is just in a good fucking mood. That is very like moon and Libra training Venus and Gemini. You're with a bunch of people. You're sharing food with them, um, especially if you have like not American food where American food is very individualized. I'm trying to think of like, I think uh, um, like Indian, I might be wrong about this. Um, please correct me in the comments, but like Food that's shareable. I'm pretty sure like Ethiopian food's very like shareable. Like you get like a big plate of stuff and everyone like kind of takes a little bit. Um, there's a lot of like sharing during this time. And so while the moon's in Libra, trining Venus and Gemini connect, uh, socialize, what's going to make you feel good? Um, I think that's also another thing too with like Mercury and Cancer and Venus and Gemini. It's like, well, it's kind of like if you ever had like a family party and you know, you, it's kind of hard to always see everyone in the family, but there's, you're like, Hey, I need to talk to this cousin for a minute. Like I haven't seen this cousin in a minute and I need to talk to them. That's kind of like what's going on on Wednesday. So I think Wednesday is like, you know, I think on Tuesday, you're going to have to negotiate. You might have to give up a little things. Um, but then on Wednesday you feel good about it, right? It, it takes some pressure off of you and it alleviates some pressure. So then we get into Thursday and the only thing on Thursday is the moon's trining Saturn. That's really it. I like that. Oh, sorry, I have something in my eye. Um, I'm all over the place in this horoscope. Anyway, on Thursday, the moon's just going to be trining Saturn. Moon's in Libra. Harmony, negotiation, uh, peace, balance, getting everything just right. What's going to make you feel good? 
And that moon's going to be trining Saturn. Now, what I... I guess what I don't like about it is I'm just... I, I have not been a big fan of Saturn and Aquarius, as you guys can probably tell. But um, I think while the moon's in Libra trining Saturn... I mean, look at this. We have the moon, Venus, Saturn. We have the night chart, the, the nighttime planets all here mingling. I think there's something really like enjoyable socially. Like... Saturn and Aquarius, sure, it's retrograde. We're on this other side of things now. But that moon training is like, you know, um, misery loves company. And I don't necessarily think this is like, um, like you're miserable and, you know, you're looking for other people to relate to. But this is one of those things of like the moon and Libra training Saturn is like connect to people that relate to you. You know what I mean? Find people with those shared experiences. Like, for example, the astrology... Uh, I know for a lot, like I'm really, I have a lot of astrology friends. Like I don't need more astrology friends. Like everyone I know does astrology because that's just how my life is. But I know a lot of you watch astrology almost in secret. Like you like don't have anyone to talk to about it. And like this would be like, and don't take this like super literally. I mean, maybe for some of you, but this would be like, if you don't have any astrology friends and let's say you live in Nebraska or some shit like that and you don't know anyone that does astrology, try to, this would be a great day to really connect to someone who's like that you don't like Saturn and Aquarius, like, again, like maybe if you live in Nebraska, I don't think that's the biggest astrology community there, nor would they be that open minded to it. But this is like, try to find someone that you can connect to, try to find someone that you can relate to. Uh, the moon separating from Venus applying to Saturn. These are also like securing relationships. This is like defining relationships. This is, um, I really just think on Thursday, it's kind of just about like getting everything in order, getting everything peaceful and finding what harmony you can before the moon goes into Scorpio. Because then we get into Friday. Friday's not looking good. Friday's not looking good. Um, <sighs> Friday just feels shitty. The moon's going to go into Scorpio and it's going to go opposite Mars and then the moon's going to try and Mercury. Uh, pretty much we're all going to be little baby whiners and have little hissy fits on Friday. We're all going to. like. There's If there is someone... There is no way the moon can be fallen in Scorpio opposite of fallen or a detriment Mars in, in Taurus. Like we're all going to be on our periods. We're all going to be emotional. We're all going to be really upset. And you know, there's a time and place for that. I feel like this is like on Friday, if you're just in a bitchy mood, like, yeah, like not necessarily you need, it's not like you should just be in a bitchy mood, but like, don't resist that. Cause also too, like if you're upset about something and if you're just like, Oh, I'm upset, but I'll be the bigger person. I'll just bury it inside. That's how like diseases manifest in your body with all that resentment and shit like that. The moon's going to go into Scorpio and the moon, I mean, our emotions, our body, it's going to be in fallen in Scorpio. There's this sense of like, it's gut wrenching. It's so guttural with the moon in Scorpio and it sucks. It really does. I really feel for moon and Scorpio people. Like I really do. And it's going to go opposite Mars and Taurus, where I feel like there's this nothing you can do energy about it. Um, and that's very opposite, or I should say, that doesn't necessarily go in line with, like, I guess, my my message in my astrology. But I think while the moon's in Scorpio, opposite Mars and Taurus is like, but also doing nothing is okay. Like, the worst thing that you could ever do when you're emotional and you're upset is react. Like, when you're emotional and you're upset and someone's pissing you off, don't yell at them. Don't react to them. You need to respond. And this does not look like you will be in the position to where you can respond. I think on Friday morning, I think it's going to be upsetting. I think you're going to be hurt. I think you are going to be emotional. And then I think it's going to take the day to think about things because the moon will be in Scorpio and it's making, after it goes opposite Mars, again, there's this sense of like, something's going to happen to you and there's nothing you can do about it. You're fucked. And you're just going to have to take the L. That's what happens. But the moon will then start to apply to Mercury and Cancer right here. After you kind of cool off a little bit, what I do like about Friday is the moon in Scorpio trining Mercury and Cancer is like someone, I read a comment on last week's horoscope and they were like, it was a really random question. They're like, when's a good day to reconcile with someone? And I think that is a subjective question. I'd always say like refer to your own birth chart, but this is like, this is, I don't think the moon going opposite Mars is good for reconciling, but that moon in Scorpio trining Mercury and Cancer, I think would be, because like, clearly we're upset. Clearly there's some hurt emotions here and trining Mercury and Cancer is like, uh, something I say a lot with Mercury and Cancer is like saying what you need to say. It's so hard to do that. Um, you, you would think it would be easier 
just hearing, saying what you need to say, you go like, duh, I need to say what I need to say. But it's not that easy. It's not that simple. And I think that moon in Scorpio training Mercury in Cancer is like, it's it's going to be easy to convey your emotions. And I think you will be heard during this day because this is like, we're this isn't like a, hey, I'm feeling great and I want to bring up the super emotional conversation. This is like, hey, I'm fucking hurt and we need to fucking talk right now. So I think while the moon's in Scorpio training, like on Friday, it's just going to be rough. And, and I would just say, please don't react. Please, like if you are in a moment where you're like fucking enraged and you just want to, you know what? Cut this person off or do this or do that. Don't do that. Like go away, go smoke a cigarette or something or fucking isolate yourself. Be a little baby whiner bitch for a minute and then get to a place where you can express your emotions because you have an opportunity to be heard, but you're not going to be heard if you're reacting, which is a very Mars and Taurus thing. Or, or like, also don't be stubborn, by the way, with this Mars and Taurus. Like, like, I think with Mars and Taurus, it's easy to be like, no, I'm going to just stay right here and not move. And that doesn't, oh, like, like, don't be a fucking asshole. But I think with the moon opposite Mars, there's going to be this sense of like, I'm going to be an asshole. I'm going to be a dick because I'm hurt. And when you're hurt, you just want to hurt other people because that's what we do. But energy, this is something I have real, I, I don't even say I have worked on. I'm currently working on and it's hard as shit. But what I have learned is everything is energy. Energy cannot be created nor destroyed. It could only be transferred. Like the other day, I got a really shitty text message, like a really shitty one. And I could have, I had every opportunity to react to be in revenge mode to get back at this person. And what does that do? That puts me, that makes me hurt. You know, when I'm in revenge mode, that just hurts me, right? That doesn't do anything to the person. And that person who who said what they said to me, that's just them being hurt. And they're just trying to put it onto me. Like that has nothing to do with me. And so what I did instead was I went to the gym and I murdered my workout. I had a great workout. I have not been consistent with the gym and I had a great workout. And I want you to think about like on Friday, if you're pissed and you're like, please take that, like take someone's, like, let's say someone just pisses you off, take that energy and turn it into something positive. Transmute that shit. Like it's, 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 it's hard, but this is why we're into astrology. Like I hate the comments of people that are like, I just want things to be easy and nice. I'm like, like, and also like the, like people get all butthurt about like personal development and shit. Like what, what are you doing here? Like if you're into this astrology set and you're not trying to better your life or better other people's life, like literally, why are you here? Are you just here to validate your shitty excuses to why you can be a piece of shit? I'm sure there's other reasons, but I'm just saying like, really try to transmute this energy, um, turn it into something positive. If you are dealing with some negative energy, put it into something productive Put it into something that you can, because again, negative energy can get transmuted into positive energy. It just takes will. It just takes effort. That's all it does. But it's but it's going to be so easy to react. It's going to be so easy. The universe is going to be like, come on, I want you to react. Do you want to react? Come on, just react. And then you're going to react and then you're going to regret it. The moon in Scorpio, by the way, this is when the moon first ingresses. We still have the whole moon in Scorpio transit to live in regret especially when it gets to right here, the little south node. If you don't want to regret stuff on Friday, transmute that energy. Because if you do, if you are go in revenge mode and you kind of, re and, and you do something you don't want to do, you're going to live with a day and a half of regret and it's not going to feel good. So just really try on Friday is my, and again, give yourself like energy and time and space. And then if you really need to communicate something, you have an opportunity later that evening when the moon is starting to try and Mercury. <sighs> Let's go to Saturday. Saturday, I'm going to grab a drink of water while I do this. Saturday, Mercury is going to square Jupiter. The moon is going to go opposite Uranus and it's going to conjoin the south node and then the moon will square Saturn and try Neptune. You want to talk about, um, have you ever been like really angry about something because you felt like someone did something wrong to you only to realize you were in the wrong and you were the dumb one? This is why you shouldn't react on Friday because I think on Saturday you're going to be like, oh, I'm the dumb one. I fucked up. Um, oh, which, which button am I clicking here? There we go. So let's go over this. <laughs> There's a lot to go over, to be honest with you. Hold on. Let's go, let me go back to that. Mercury squares Jupiter. Let's handle that one first. So Mercury and Cancer squaring Jupiter and Aries. I think I said this on my like monthly horoscopes. Mercury and Cancer squaring Jupiter and Aries is, um, for example... 
Uh, fireworks are fun, but um, after midnight, after after midnight, stop. We all want to go to bed, and then you got animals that are stressed out about the fireworks. I love fireworks. I love blowing shit up just like any other person in this country. But like the Mercury square Jupiter's uh, Jupiter and Aries is like, yeah, let's Jupiter and Aries all night long. And then Mercury squaring Jupiter is like, hey, I need some fucking sleep. <laughs> I think well, the Mer like Mercury squaring Jupiter is, I also don't necessarily think this, this is not a harmonious aspect. Like Jupiter and Aries and Mercury and Cancer have two different priorities. Jupiter and Aries priority is like to expand the Martian energy of like action and drive. And Mercury and Cancer's priority is like focusing on protecting and nurturing and quietness and things like that. And so while Mercury squares Jupiter, there's going to be this conflict of interest, right? Some people want to blow up fireworks all night long. Some people want to go to bed and have pets with anxiety. And it's just going to be a day where no one gets what they want. Maybe not no one gets what they want, but there's going to be uh, this combativeness with it. But the problem is the moon is going to be it's going to go opposite Uranus. So again, the biggest thing with this moon in Scorpio is the moon in Scorpio with these Uranus and these nodes transits are, is a ticking time bomb. Let's say this moon in Scorpio transit, you're like, all right, I'm doing good. I'm doing fine. But then the moon's going to hit Uranus and something's going to snap. Something's going to change. You then still have to be clear about shit. Like Uranus in Taurus is very um, unpredictable. Uranus in Taurus is going to be like a lot of upheaval. And that moon in Scorpio going opposite Uranus is like, just doing one wrong thing and it all coming apart. And then that moon's going to conjoin the South node. Saturday's kind of depressing to be honest with you guys. Like be, well, I think it's easy to be in a depressive mood on Saturday. So I, so the biggest thing is, this is why I'm saying like, don't do regrettable decisions. I think it'll be really easy to, and I think you'll just live in it on Saturday. If you just, especially too, if you just kind of like, like decide to change your mind randomly. Anyway, um, then the moon squares Saturn too, by the way, after it conjoins the south node. So then with the moon squaring Saturn, there's a lot of this like frustration and anger and upsetness about like how things are and the order. And like moon and Aquarius, I mean, moon and Scorpio squaring Saturn and Aquarius is like banishing yourself. Like every, it's kind of like when like a cat goes to die, they like isolate themselves because they don't want anyone to see. This moon and Scorpio squaring Saturn and Aquarius is like, I can't be seen. Clearly I'm not good enough. Blah, 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 blah. So just on Saturday, I think a productive way to do this is like, like if you want this to be positive, I think the biggest thing here is like, you know, be aware of what you're doing. It's going to be difficult. And this moon in Scorpio on the south node is you're going to have to get over emotions. You are going to have to take a lot of emotional control. And this is, for example, if you just react and do things that you regret, this is going to be nothing but regret and you're going to hate it. But if you don't do that, you're still going to hate it. This is still going to be challenging, but you're going to be challenged with doing things that you're uncomfortable with. This is a great day to do things that you're uncomfortable with. Like moon and Scorpio on the south node squaring Saturn, doing something new that you don't want to deal with, that you don't want to do. Like don't do stuff that you don't want to do, I feel like on good astrology. Do things you want to do versus this is like, hey, I've been putting this off. This is going to suck and there's no way around it. Just handle it. And that moon squaring Saturn, it's going to take a long time. It's not going to be fun. It may not go the way that you plan uh, on it going. And you're with the moon and Scorpio, you're just going to have to let it go. You're just going to have to let it go. So then we get to Sunday. Then the moon goes into Sagittarius and it trines Jupiter when the sun sextiles Uranus. This is a much more positive end to the week because the moon goes into Sagittarius. Freedom, like just running away, getting away from all your problems. The moon's going to try. But then, well, the thing is, I think while the moon hits the south node, there's a sense of like, getting over stuff and doing what's uncomfortable and it's not going to be easy. But then the moon goes into Sagittarius and you're like, damn, that actually, I feel good now that I handled that. Like there's nothing better than doing something really, really hard that you didn't want to do and doing it anyway. Because then you're like, fuck, I just did that. And the moon goes into Sagittarius where there's the sense of freedom, there's a sense of excitement and it's trining Jupiter where there's like, hey, I just did that. What else can I do? What else can I accomplish? What was the other thing? Oh, sun sex tells Uranus. That was the, well, that was the big thing. Cause I think as the moon's in Sag trying Jupiter, there is this emotional like fire energy of like being capable of doing things and feeling full of yourself. 
But the sun sextiles Uranus. A lot of liberation. Like the sun is our will and our ego and our identity. It's in cancer. And maybe we're a little sensitive. Maybe we're a little bit crabby. But as it sextiles Uranus, the planet of liberation and freedom, there is this like potential energy with Sunday of like freeing, freeing yourself. Like not being trapped, not being locked up. So I think on Sunday, you know, this is a form of self-care. Self-care, by the way, is not doing nothing. Self-care is not just laying on your couch and sulking and scrolling. That's not self-care. Self-care is like doing the things that you're uncomfortable with. Self-care is doing the things you know you need to do, what your heart says that you need to do, what your subconscious says, not what your fears say, but like, hey, I look at this as like the sun, sex telling you're honest, this is a great day to try something new that's actually self-care. And maybe that's like doing something that's really, really hard and really, really difficult that you didn't want to do, but you did it anyway. And I, there's nothing more validating than doing something that you thought you couldn't do. So maybe try to do what you can't do. Anyway, that leads us to next week. Next week, full moon in Capricorn. Shit's getting a little serious. Venus trying Saturn. I like that, but Venus squares Neptune. I don't like that. Uh, and they do that at like the same time. So there's a lot of like good things coming, but a lot of confusion. And then there's the Mercury Kazemi. This is where I want to point. Mercury Kazemi, a lot of clarity really hits. I'm actually kind of looking forward to this Mercury Kazemi. And then Venus enters Cancer. That actually happens really on Monday. Um, but again, that's when like the feel good vibes come. And I mean, like, I don't have a lot of last thoughts, to be honest with you guys. I think really this week is, I mean, Mars going into Taurus is not going to be fun. And you are going to be challenged with yourself. And I think this is a big week to like, uh, see, astrology is a time honoring exercise. Honor this time. Do things that are difficult. And again, Mars and Taurus is, you, you might have to give up on some stuff. You might have to do something that's more sustainable. And you're going to have to negotiate. And these are all hard things to do. And then the moon's going to go into Scorpio. You're going to be triggered. You're going to be triggered. And you can react, but reactions don't look good for you this week. If you want to react, I think you're going to just instantly regret it. And then do you want to live in that regret or do you want to, you know, do something different for once? So I think I'll just leave you guys off with that. It's a pretty rough week this week. So, you know, I think, it, but it's, you know, Again, I've talked about this is I've been like, this week's going to be great. And people are like, this week is the worst. So, you know, maybe some of you are going to have an amazing week. Maybe, well, for example, with all of these hardcore transits, maybe this is what a lot of you need, right? Like it might be hard, but uh, a lot of you might need it. For example, like, well, I, I can't even think of an example at the top of my head, but that's what I have for you guys this week. Uh, thank you so much for being here. Please like this video and comment on it just to help me with the algorithm. Let me know. Tell me that you hate me or tell me that you love me. I don't care. Just comment on it. It helps out the algorithm. Uh, like this video if you truly like it. Let's me know that you like it and that you like and that you want more of this stuff. Um, and yeah, I guess I'll be seeing you guys uh, next week.